Hi, today I'd like to discuss where I'm at in my seemingly endless pursuits for the perfect pants. Most of my life I wore blue jeans. They're comfortable, they're readily available, they're not expensive. They always seem to work pretty good until I started to realize that there's a lot of better options out there. Blue jeans have some serious flaws, limited pocket space. When they get wet, you can literally freeze to death in them if you're outside in cold weather. So I started to look in every possible direction. I'm really into middle military surplus. I've tried all kinds of different military surplus pants. Great thing about military surplus, you get really high quality stuff, generally from European countries that are turning in their uh, surplus from the 50s, 60s, 70s. Good quality stuff. It's dirt cheap. There's all kinds of variations from so many different countries. But I never really found anything that entirely clicked with me. The sizing was usually a little off, or maybe the pockets were a little off, or maybe the construction details were a little off. Nothing entirely clicked with me. For wintertime use, I really do like the German 1960s wool pants. They're kind of similar to um, Bill, uh, Big Bill or Kodet from Canada or some of the Filson wool pants, a uh, similar kind of thing, but you can get a really good deal on it because of German surplus. Uh, but even those were only good just for winter and just for being out in the woods. Those heavy, thick wool pants are, are bulky, and they're nothing that you're going to really wear in the summertime at all. And you're not really going to wear them into a, a city or an urban environment. So they, they don't fit in. They're really just kind of specialized for being out in the woods. I also tried the USGI M1951, or is it 52? I forget. Somebody will correct me. Um, field trousers. They come in wool. They come in cotton. Really good quality pants. Even here we are seven years later, there's tons of those things never issued for dirt cheap on the surplus market. But those things fit ridiculously. I mean, they basically should be measured in a chest size, not a waist size. They they come up so high, uh, the fitting is is just weird, and they're not really comfortable. I think that those pants were originally made more for the style of the 50s than to be a practical pant. I like to wear pants right around my waist. It's where they kind of naturally fall. So where are we right now? 2020. I think I may have discovered the perfect pants, but with uh, at least two caveats. I'll point those out at the end. Uh, right now, as you can see, I'm wearing some kind of sharp looking trousers, huh? Well, you may not have seen these for sale. You may not be familiar with them because they were only offered for sale for about six months, and this was about a year and a half ago. These are the Filson whipcord pants, the ones with the pockets in the front and the pockets here. Anyways, I've been wearing these pants and another pair for literally a year and a half straight. Wore them all throughout um, the summertime, wearing them in the wintertime. Um, they are working fantastically. So what are these? These are a whipcord 100% wool material. On the website, it said made in USA of mater uh, imported materials. I was very skeptical. I'm like, imported materials? What is this from, uh, you know, an Asian sweatshop? What's the deal? So it took me literally several months of calling emails. I was being ignored by Filson. Finally, I got one of their sales reps to kind of um, uh, read between the lines, uh, give me some info that, makes me pretty confident that the material is made in a mill in Canada. They won't tell me where. I, I can't get all the exact specs. must be some proprietary thing, but pretty sure the material itself, the whipcord material, is made in Canada. So that's good, good quality stuff. Uh, they're then assembled at their shop um, in the U.S. in Filson. So I got these pants. I got a size 34. I got a size 32. What I like about them, this whipcord material is so nice. It's a really relatively thin but super dense super tight material basically it's the wool fibers that have been whipped around twisted around into cords imagine a bunch of wool fibers that have been spun really really tight and then those are woven into a really really tight fabric so this is quite a bit different from a more of a, a felted wool that you would experience with like some of the the thicker um i don't even remember what they call them but filson makes some other wool pants uh, Kodet makes some other, Big Bill makes some other wool pants, uh, the German military surplus pants. Those are a thicker wool material and they feel more like a blanket weight. They kind of feel like a, a blanket. Those materials don't seem to wear nearly as well as this material. Uh, this material is so much thinner. It blocks the wind 
much better than those other materials. It's much easier to stay clean. I've been wearing these pants, like I say, for most of the last year and a half, along with another pair of Filson pants that I have. During that period of time, I think I've washed these twice. That may sound kind of gross, but they just don't really get dirty. And when they do, they have that unique property of wool that the dirt kind of sheds itself off. I shake these things out regularly all the time. Some dust comes off of them. But other than that, I mean, they look clean. They look like they're really, um, you know, fresh out of the, the wrapper. I've been using these not for hard work pants. If I'm, you know, climbing underneath vehicles, doing that sort of stuff, or doing greasy, uh, grimy work, I don't want to destroy them before um, their time because I can't get any more of them. And they were not inexpensive. We could buy a new uh, full price. So I haven't been using them for that sort of work, but I have been wearing them in the in the woods all the time. Uh, everything else I do, just my day-to-day -day pants. And what's cool is these can be day-to-day -day pants. They look stylish enough. They look um, uh, like nice pants. I've gotten so many compliments on them. I'll wear them into town. I'll wear them into uh, a nice restaurant. I'll wear them, uh, whatever I'm doing, you know, normal everyday uh, activity when you're in a city. And then I don't have to change out into other pants when I come home and go into the woods or when I go out hiking somewhere. That's what I'm kind of moving towards with everything. I want to have some sort of a, a uniform, simple method of dress that covers everything. So wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I'm good to go, whether it's up in the mountains or down into the valley where all the people are. I don't have to change and have this this whole uh, menagerie of all these different clothes. These really are great pants for any time of year, all year long. Getting into the details of the pants. There's a nice big pocket here, a nice big pocket here. And it's kind of interesting how they've done this. They didn't go with conventional cargo pockets on the side. Rather, they put some cargo pockets right in the front of the other pockets. They're not the biggest pockets, but they're big enough. For example, I can fit my wallet in this pocket in the front. Then I usually keep this pocket empty right here. This pocket in the front, I keep a little mix of some different gear. Let's see what we've got in here right now. Uh, reading glasses, chapstick, lighter, all of that fits in the front, front pocket and I still have room for a, a few other things. I don't want to overstuff my pockets and that's kind of nice with these little mini cargo pockets as well. If I had huge cargo pockets on the side, I tend to really overstuff those. So you got these huge things waddling along. These pockets here keep me more honest. Uh, in this front pocket right here, I have my ever-present knife, some keys, another little knife. Keep everything on a paracord so it's always accessible. Back pockets, just some medium-sized back pockets. They have nice snaps on them. I usually don't keep a lot of things in my back pockets. Um, the front is a snap as well. So that's it with the pockets. Um, so getting on to the details of the belt loops. Um, this is one issue that I have with these particular pants. Right now the belt that I'm wearing, it's the belt I usually wear. It's a one and a half inch belt man horse high gun belt. It's my favorite belt. Really great simple super durable belt. One and a half inch is a really common size. They fit basically all the pants I've tried them with except for these. For some reason they have really big loops right here that are too big and then there's an absence of loops along here. This should definitely be another loop or two, at least one loop here, but there isn't. So sometimes the belt can pull up. And in the front, there's two loops right here, which are too small. They're way, way smaller than these other loops in the back. So putting this kind of conventionally sized one and a half inch belt through those is, is tight. I'm able to get it through, uh, but it fits a little bit tight. One of the other details of the pants is the stitching. And this is something that I mentioned before as being a problem. So these pants I'm wearing right now, these are size 34, and I have pretty good flexibility with these, even with two pair of long johns underneath right now, uh, they fit good. I usually don't wear a 34, I usually wear a 32. When I got these, I bought one pant that's a 32, one pant that's a 34. The 32s I was wearing in the summertime, and with no long johns underneath, they really fit well. They're a nice uh, trim pant, really good looking pant, really comfortable, just as comfortable as wearing your favorite pair of blue jeans, but while affording all the uh, protection and nice features of wool. But then one day I bent down to pick something up and this is what happened. I've never had a pair of pants split open before in my entire life. And I mean, I've worn blue jeans forever. Slender fitting, slim fitting blue jeans. I've 
you know, done all kinds of work, everything you can imagine, athletic activities, what have you, and I've never split a pair of blue jeans open. The stitching always held up. So there's clearly something wrong with the stitching on these things. I'm looking at them, and as I've studied it, it looks like there's just one stitch holding this whole thing together. So jeans would typically have several stitches. Um, the material seems like it's going to be indestructible. Fantastic material. The real weak link in this chain is Filson's manufacturing, which is disappointing. You think a expensive product made in the U.S. is going to be put together better than that. Well, that's a real big uh, negative right there. The construction details, I can say from personal experience, I don't trust the stitching. So we'll see how that plays out. Another problem with these pants is that you can't get them anymore. They have apparently discontinued them. From what I've heard, they discontinued them a few years ago. Then they brought them back. Maybe they'll bring them back again. I'm not sure. They're also very expensive pants. I think way too expensive for what they are. When I got these, I was able to find a, a clearance. I got them for way, way less than what they normally cost. I don't think I'd ever pay what they normally cost. So kind of difficult to make my u new uniform based around these pants when I can't get them and probably wouldn't pay that much anyway. So I'm not quite sure where I'm going. Maybe I'll see if I can get these things to uh, hold up for um, many more years until I find a better alternative. That's where I'm sort of at right now. So yeah, I've kind of clicked with some pants that may be the perfect pants, but there's obviously some bigger issues with them. Please let me know what you guys have found in regards to pants. Is there anything else out there? Please tell me about it. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys in the next video.